Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So just getting back from a nice vacation with the family to Myrtle Beach. We went and enjoyed the coast for a few days and uh, it was nice to relax and just get away. I've been going over a question that has been asked me for several months since I've been carving and creating YouTube videos. It's been asked many, many times and I never want to tackle it because it's such a tough topic in my opinion. Uh, first thing I want to do though is say someone else recently put a video out on this topic and he covered it really really well So after my video you're gonna have to go there and check it out But first give this video a thumbs up hit subscribe when you do hit that bell and hit all so you guys don't miss any future videos Now the other carver that recently put his video out on this topic Covered it so so well so when you're done with my video you guys need to go over and check out Ryan Cook Ryan Cook carves and watch his video on the topic of pricing out your carvings because I think he did a great job covering it. Now I'm creating my video because obviously I have subscribers and followers and people that follow me personally and would like to hear my take. I think his take is really good as well. I watched the whole video and, and nice job, Ryan. Really, you covered it very, very well. So I'm gonna do my best to cover it with my own insight, my own thoughts because Ryan's start in the world of carving was different than my start and so we will have different opinions now first things first uh the big deal is the bit the big discussion i guess is new carvers what do i price my work at you know i want to sell carvings how do i price them out and this topic really is a difficult one to cover to give you insight all i can do is tell you what i have done and what I have done is, honestly, I created a very quick list just now before I started shooting the video because I've already shot this video three times and it's just so all over the place because everything connects. So it's ah, it's tough to stay on topic. It just, it, it's all over the place. Hold on. Pricing out carvings. Now, when I started, what I did was look at local carvings, local carvers, uh, met them, a, I went to craft fairs and things that I normally did and looked at other people's prices and what their work looked like, what it does look like. What are they getting for that piece? And are they actually selling? I thought, okay, wow, okay, I can, I can make some money doing this. You know, cool. Now, that was after I've already started. Now, keep in mind, you know, your first carvings aren't going to be these, these, you know, pieces that command high dollar. I mean, unless you're very talented, you may be knocking out amazing pieces. But for the majority, most new carvers are knocking out pieces that are blocky and low in detail. In my opinion, that means keep it lower in price. You want to give yourself room to grow. Now, it is a good idea, in my opinion, to price your carvings out based on size, not necessarily uh, time. In the beginning, you're going to carve up a few pieces and it's going to take a while. It's going to take you a few hours to carve a two, three foot bear. It's going to take you a few hours to carve a one foot bear. Bears are going to be our reference point because I carve a lot of those. A lot of you will be carving those as well if you're not already. So my suggestion is, is to get a bunch of practice time in before you attempt to try and put a price on them. Like carve up 10, 12 bears or whatever the piece is and you will notice that it's getting easier with each one right and so if you were to price it out by hours that first one you're going to be like i need 500 dollars for this one and a half foot bear you may get lucky and have someone you know give you 500 dollars, but in my opinion in my area that's a tough sell for a one or two foot bear so you know, starting off between $30 to $50 a foot for very uh, low detail beginner carving bears is a fairly good price range, in my opinion, in my area. Remind, you know, keep in mind I'm in upstate New York. I'm not in or near New York City. I'm up in, you know, country. There's a lot of country setting around me. I'm not like, like, in the city but we're in an area where people have camps and people are going to camp and and so people always want bears now 
your very first bear keep for yourself, but the rest of those first carvings, keep in mind you want to sell if you're in the game to sell. I mean, you're watching this video, so I would think you're trying to sell, right? Make a few dollars. I think it's a good idea to work on those first pieces with your stock bar. You don't have to jump in the game and spend a ton of money and try to, you know, put as much detail into them with that stock bar and whatever tools you already have. And then just keep your price where you're happy with it. You know, you're not trying to uh, get rich in your first sale, but you're trying to make a few dollars that you're happy with. You know, I know I said 30 to 50 bucks. I think it's a good starting point. But maybe you're happy with less. Maybe you'll only be happy with more. You really have to test the market in your area and, and see. I mean, it's tough for me to tell you what to price out your work at. It's your work, you know, so you have to be happy with it. You also have to be realistic. You know what I mean? You have to be realistic. Now, I tend to take a hit on a lot of stuff because I just don't want to sit on it. And that probably hurts me because I'll have a price. People don't buy it. it sits around for a year. I drop my price. Sometimes it goes real quick then, or sometimes it sits. The bigger carvings you guys see on my channel, like one of the big male lions, the shark I did, the Bigfoot I did, uh, Jack Skellington, those are all carvings I'm still sitting on. All of them. And some of those we've had for, what, a year or two years? I'm sitting on them. They're at a local store, which we'll get into soon in this topic, where to sell your work. But they're priced out at a price where I think they should be good to to go. And I've even knocked the price down and wrote a sale on them because I don't want to sit on them anymore. I'd like to make some money. So things to think about. Uh, it, it's tough. It's a game. It really is. It's a game and it's a gamble on creating pieces that aren't top sellers. Bears are top sellers. I could create a bear that's five, six feet tall, put it out there and sell it. Now I could tell you, oh, I sell that bear for five, six, eight hundred dollars, but you don't know what that bear looked like. You don't know all the detail or the little bit of detail that went into it. So I mean, that's all a factor as well. So pricing out your carvings by the foot is a good way to start rather than by the hour. So pick a price, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars here as a beginner with no real tools and you're just starting out and, you know, create your carving by the foot. Now, be happy with it. You know, if you're happy with $75 a foot or a hundred a foot, go for it. There's no guarantees in the sale. There never is because just the way the market is, global economy, people get nervous. People, there's times people want to buy, 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 and there's times people don't want to buy. So there's a lot of factors. Um, you know, as a new carver jumping in feet first, going full time, just think about it. Really think about it. Think about what tools do you have? What tools are you going to want? How much is that going to cost, right? How much is it going to cost to upgrade to all the tools you want or need to, uh, to really get going? You know, like a couple chainsaws, a couple die grinders, um, some a an angle grinder, your safety gear, your bits, your sanding discs, the tools you can always use and don't have to replace, and the things that have to be replaced often sandpaper paint clear coat brushes um those are all factors that go in as a full-time business and go into the the price of your carving so like if i just burn a bear and clear it i make him like five bucks less than a bear that i spray paint and clear it i had to buy a can of paint it should be a little bit more you know maybe ten dollars more for bear that i spray paint actually because you know your time and and things like that but just things to think of propane for your torch that's you got to replace it i mean these are all factors to think about when you're pricing out your work and when you're considering making this a full-time thing now you guys watch my videos you see a lot you a lot of people think i do this full time i do and i don't i still work a full-time job because that job offers health dental and i for my family and i'm just not ready to give that up on the flip side of that, if I could carve 
uh, five days a week, eight hour days, I think we would be pretty good. You know, I think I could uh, make it work and make it happen. But, you know, there's there's factors in there and there's factors for you guys as well to take, you know, you got You got to consider all your bills. How much do I need to make a week or a month to make it happen? Plus a little extra because the next week you might not make as much, right? So small numbers. Say you need $200 a week to pay all your bills. I mean, that would be awesome, right? But let's say it's $200 a week to pay all your bills. You got to make $800 a month carving. Cool. But now you kind of need to shoot for $1,200 a month because you don't want to just live your life paying your bills. You want to be able to do things, you know? You want to be able to have a little bit extra to replace the saw that just blew up or the grinder that just burned out or, you know, the burr you smacked off the whatever and it broke and we have to keep in mind there's things that need to be replaced as you you know if you get into this full time and make it a business so <clears throat> i guess it's answering a question in a roundabout way but not the way you're all going to want that's that's what i'm thinking as far as price size details and time so your first carving takes a lot of time you're going to want to price it high because of the time but pricing it by the foot or by the inch even is a little bit better way to go, in my opinion, in leaving yourself room to grow. Um, an average standard that I have heard from carvers in my area is charging at least $100 a foot. Uh, well, $80 to $100 a foot. I personally charge $80 to $125 a foot um, for carvings. And that is just where I'm at, 80 to 125. So it depends on the piece, the detail, and all those sort of things. Now that is for stock carvings. When somebody places an order for me, the starting point is 125 and it goes up. So it going up is based upon, you know, the girth of the log and the size of the carving. So as the girth of the log gets bigger, the carving gets taller, the price per foot goes up. So starting off with, you know, just a one foot, bear that somebody custom ordered i'm usually going to charge around 125. i say all these numbers as humbly as i can because that's just me it's it i'm not getting rich here guys i'm not now um you know you get a custom order for a four foot bear i might bump that up to 150 a foot if he's not just holding a sign and he's climbing a tree we might be looking at 200 a foot or 250 a foot for a four five six foot bear it all depends on the detail and the piece. Those are things that you have to set yourself and get comfortable with. Like I'm basically saying to you, I don't have an exact set price. I have an average or rough scale that I'm following to price out my work. If you've made it this far, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and hit subscribe, all right guys? Real quick side note, we recently hit 10,000 subscribers. You guys rock, you guys do. We're just over 10,000, so we're gonna be talking about doing a giveaway. We'll have new beginners watching this, a giveaway, which will include a new die grinder and a couple saber tooth burrs with that as like a first place winner for a giveaway. We've got a little bit of uh, saber tooth carving tools, swag, you know, like some stickers and tattoos and key rings. Uh, Base Camp Masks wants to give away a mask to a lucky winner. They'll ship that out. I think I got a couple other things. I don't remember, but we'll do a 10,000 sub giveaway. We'll get it figured out and. uh you want to hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit all, so you don't miss the video that's going to give you the details when we do that giveaway, all right, guys? I know I'm sidetracked. Sidetracked Sally over here. Can't remember nothing. Getting off the rails. But anyway, price, size, details, time, all things to consider. This is such a tough topic. Um, area. Where are you located? Are you? Do you have a lot of competition, as in are there a lot of other carvers or artists trying to sell what you're selling? Look at that market. You know what I mean? Is it flooded? If so, what do their prices look like? What does their work look like compared to your work and your price? Keep all those factors in mind. But also, if someone comes to you and says, oh, well, so-and-so can do it for less. Okay, so go have them make it. You know, it's funny. I said, go watch Ryan Cook. He said that same thing, but I deal with that myself. I have plenty of people come to me and say, well, so-and-so will do it for less. That's That's fine. I even had another carver from a few hours away from me. I, I posted on a marketplace thing on Facebook, you know, and there's different areas and like website things like uh, garage sale sites on there. 
And I posted one that was a few hours away because I actually have customers a few hours away in that area. And this carver jumped on and was furious that I posted in his area and kept writing under my post, I could make this for less, I could make this for less, I could make this for less. Those sort of actions, like, you look like a jerk. You look like a jerk. Don't be... So you're starting out, even if, if you get in this game and you're in it for a while, don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. Even if you private message somebody, you feel like they're stepping on your toes. It is better to be calm, cool, and collective in a situation rather than look like a jerk because you are the face of your business. You are. And so you're in your local area or even just outside your local area trying to sell. Keep in mind the way you talk to people, the way you handle yourself, your actions, your words are the face of your business. You know what I mean? And that's, that is a big deal in your area. If you are cool with people, people want to shop with you. Which in return means you will eventually be able to command higher prices. There's so many factors. There really are. Like my local area, I help support the school when they do school functions. The PTA will do a, a school function. They'll do a like a, a color run, right? So I will purchase a sign for X amount of dollars that they stick in the ground on the color run so people can see my business as they do the color run. It's not a big amount of money, but it gets my name out to my community. People in my community reach out once in a while. Hey, we're doing a benefit for so-and-so. If, if I haven't met my benefit quota, my own personal number of benefits for the year, I help them out. I give them a small bear. Why? Well, that helps get your name out, right? So we're talking about area, competition, things like that. Now, those aren't really selling things if you're giving them away. And I know this video is all over, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to give you so much information and whatever's popping in my head is what I'm giving to you. So um, other ways to advertise, to sell your work, uh, Facebook, Facebook Marketplace, local garage sale sites on Facebook. I'll be honest, I haven't had very good luck with those things. I don't make a lot of sales on Facebook. I reach a lot of people, but I don't sell a lot. Um, it's kind of an advertising thing for me. I really just, uh, I sell a lot of my work on consignment through local stores. So I have a local store down here, Mohawk Valley Sheds, Cabins, and Moors. He sells for me on consignment. There's another store a couple towns over that sell for me. I try not to put a ton of, I try not to get my work in a ton of stores really close together. And if I do have them in stores in the same town, which which I do, I've got a brother-in-law who has a shipping center that I sell through, which isn't far from the shed place, I make sure my prices are the same. They both take the same percentage when they when sales are sold, which is you is something you have to be comfortable with, okay? Because I'm sell so I'm selling on consignment. Let's let's slow it down here. Boy, we're getting ahead of the game, right? So I sell through stores on consignment. And what I do is come up with an agreement, something I'm comfortable with, with the shop owner, something they're comfortable with as a percentage. Example, something is priced at $100 on the shelf. What percent of that sale are you happy with losing to the store owner, right? So if it's 25%, that means they get $25 when that sells for 100, which means you make 75. If it's 50%, they get $50 and you get $50 when that $100 piece sells. So selling on consignment at percent rates, you've got to be happy with it and they have to be happy with it. Conversations have to be made. Um, best way to handle that, you know, you introduce yourself, bring a few, just a piece or two. Don't bring it in the store, go in, talk to the shop owner, say, hey, this is what I do. You know, maybe show some pictures on your phone. Would you be interested? I brought one or two in the car. Could I bring them in? Or would you like to come out and check them out? And put yourself out there. You will get shot down. People will tell you, no, no thanks. I'm not interested. Or they'll be all over it. In my experience, people are usually very interested in chainsaw carvings because they just are. They're cool, right? So you have to be willing to talk to people you have you are the face of your business you have to be cool calm cool and collective in all circumstances of that aspect and you have to be willing to put yourself out there and get criticism because people are going to love your work or they're going to hate it or think it needs improvement and people will tell you and you have to be ready for that 
So I guess this isn't just pricing out your work. This is a little bit of business talk in my experience. Um, so area, competition, consignment, stores. We just covered all that briefly. If you guys have questions on these things, ask below and I will try to create a new video answering those new questions. Again, it's such a tough topic, trying not to spend an hour or two on it, just trying to brief over it. Um, growth. So we go back to, we're, we're charging X amount of dollars per foot, okay? Things to keep in mind, are you buying your logs? How much are they costing you? And how many carvings can you get out of them? Or what are you charging? Is it covering the cost of that log? Are you replacing sandpaper, discs? Are you buying tools, um, your electric, your gasoline, your oil? Uh, all of those, all of these things come into play with pricing as well, which is so tough for me to relay to you on top of your time. Because once you get better and you carve more, you're going to carve faster and carve a nicer piece. So like when you're starting out, bears are very blocky, low detail. A few months down the road, they'll be higher detail. They'll look more like a bear. A few more months down the road, you'll have awesome detail. It's going to be spot on, right? And so you want to take your prices and do the same thing. Bring them up just a little bit at a time, whether it's five, 10, $20. I don't know. You have to be comfortable with it. With that though, like I said earlier, you, you can take a loss like, like Jack Skellington, Bigfoot, uh, the lion, some other carvings that I've carved and I still have at local stores for sale. They haven't sold. And so I have to, I bring the price down a little bit where I'm happy with it. And hopefully it'll sell at a sale rate because I'd like to just make the money, you know, talking about money and pricing. That is the topic of the video, making your sales, a little bit of your business, the money and pricing. The other thing is, is why did you start carving? Did you start carving just for money or did you start carving to create, to be an artist, to just make stuff? Because going full time, Ryan Cook said the same thing, guys, because it's, it's just, it's true. Carving full time can take the fun out of it. You make this your full-time business, now there's stress because you have bills to pay. You have overhead. You have things to replace. You have deadlines to make. You have stock to make. You have customers to keep happy. A lot of stuff and stress go into it, and it can take away the artistry of it. It can take away your, your, your creativity because now you have things that you have to do, and you can't just go off the whim and create things. A little bit of stress goes into it once it's a full-time thing. Now, YouTube isn't a full-time thing for me, but I'm I'm working it so much that it might as well be. You know, full-time job, full-time YouTube, full-time business. Don't forget family that comes first on top. It's, it's a busy life. Now, in your case, you won't have all that, but going full-time as a carver, you guys got to make sure you've factored everything in. Everything in. You really do. It's a lot. Um, man, I think this video has been long enough. I think that's all I've got. You guys, leave your feedback below. I'm open to it. You guys know the deal. Let me know your thoughts on this video. What questions did I not answer or did not answer to the fullest so I can focus on that and work on putting another video out in the future on specifically that topic because we covered a lot of stuff here and a lot, there's more details to it that can really go into that. But something to keep in mind is have fun. Okay. Have fun. Start carving. Use whatever saw you have. Create some carvings. Have fun. Be an artist. Be creative. Have fun. Have fun. Hone in your technique. Be safe. Grip those saws. Rip those saws. Creep gripping and ripping and have fun before you concern yourself with how much money can I make. Because that all has so many variances and factors that it might not work out. It just might not. And so have fun with it. Enjoy it. Enjoy the time where eh, somebody wants it for 50 bucks here. I don't care. Covered my gas. I'm happy with that. Like have fun, create pieces, be creative, be an artist and have fun. Learn the skill, learn the technique, improve, enjoy it. Have 
fun. Probably should have started the video with that, but you know what? That's what really comes into mind here because it sounds like I'm doing a lot of this, 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 and this, but that's just how it's popping in my head. But the main thing is, honestly, in all of it, have fun, guys. I know I said it a lot, but express yourself through your art. Have fun with your art. Just because it didn't come out great, keep it. Somebody will like it down the line. You can give it away. You can sell it. Have fun. Be creative. Create some cool pieces. All right, guys? Really, I think that's all I've got for the video. Remember, guys, leave your comments below. Let me know what you need. Maybe we can focus on a topic. And uh, stay safe out there. Keep gripping and ripping. And I'll see you guys next time.